Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Dear cadets, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah I would like to welcome you all warmly to this online class of Islam and Moral Education As you already know, this is your teacher Muhammad Jahangir Hussain Batwari Lecturer in the Department of Islamic Studies from Borishal Cadet College before the commencement of the class, I feel the obligation to give you reminders on COVID-19, coronavirus. We were going through a very hard time, not only in Bangladesh, all over the world. And I hope you are observing cleanliness all the time. Please drink plenty of water take a shower every day you, boys you know islam means cleanliness islam is a religion of cleanliness wherever you go wherever you may be please make sure you are wearing a face mask and you are also maintaining social distance and also frequently always washing your hands please don't show any sort of negligence to doing these things otherwise you know the cost i don't want to remind you of that something um, unlucky or something unfortunate now let's enter into the topic before we enter into the topic i would like to share with you some of the lessons that we discussed in our last class these are the sum of the features that were highlighted in the last class and these are the things number one jealousy and its consequences number two fitna fasad and its adverse effects in the life of human we came to know from that class jealousy is most dangerous emotion likewise envy these are the most dangerous emotional things also we came to know about fitna fasad and we can i think we, you can remind remember the prophet's reminder or prophet's advice save save yourself from jealousy and envy also save yourself from fitna and fasad let's move on this is obviously class 10 the chapter is chap chapter 4 and lessons 21 and 22 these are the names of the topics that we are going to focus on today in this to in this class indolence riba and bribery any good lesson any successful lesson depends on how much learning has taken place in that class how well students have understood the lesson in order to ensure that there have been set some learning outcomes you should be able to know about these things before the end of the class before the end of the class you should be able to know about what is meant by indolence its harmful effects and why is it disliked in islam secondly you should be able to explain what is meant by riba and usury and lastly you will come to know about the analysis of the consequences of riba bribery and how Islam has addressed these things so let's keep going indolence I hope you have heard of this word before indolence literally means the unwillingness to work I don't want to work by nature I'm lazy and I hate to work this is the literal sense of the word indolence 
terminologically indolence is an attitude of a person towards anything that is as assigned to him or her naturally he is always trying to escape from that responsibility and duty because of his nature of avoiding the responsibility so this is in a word indolence in a nutshell what is its harmful effects why is it harmful indolence causes people to go lazy in islam if we have a look we will find if we have a careful look we will find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disliked those who hate to work in islam we know the best ibadah is salah that is prayer but immediately after the salah is completed what did allah command us to do let's get the answer from the holy quran allah says in the holy quran in surah al jumu'ah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim fa idha qudiyati as salatu fa tashiru fil ardi wa batahu min fadlillah wa batahu min fadlillah wa dhukurullaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun Allah says to us and when the prayer is finished when the prayer is ended you disperse through the land that means i have to go out of the mosque in order to work to find a work a honest work and seek the bounty of allah so that you may be successful how beautifully allah has guided us after i finish salah i have to check out looking for halal earning how can a muslim be lazy secondly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has said in the hadith of bukhari which is absolutely authentic ma akala ahad ta'aman qatta khayran min an ya'kula min amal yadi وإن نبي الله داوود كان يحب أن يأكل من عمل يده. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said, no one has eaten better food than that obtained through the hard labor of his own hands. And the Prophet of Allah, Prophet داوود عليه السلام. used to earn his livelihood by his own hands this is absolutely evident perfectly clear that all the prophets and messenger of allah started with adam alayhi salam completed with muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam all of them used to earn their livelihood by manual work I can give you more examples. Adam alayhi salam, he was a cultivator. Nuh alayhi salam, he was a carpenter. Daud alayhi salam, he was a soldier in the army. He used to make weapons from iron. Musa alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so and so forth, all of them were shepherds our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the beginning of his life he was he used to work as a shepherd later on he was appointed as a manager to the business of khadija so we find all the prophets and messengers they were diligent they were industrious they were all fond of working so indolence has no room in islam Islam has encouraged us to work for earning our livelihood by our own hands. 
So it is unexpected that a Muslim will not want to work in his or her normal state. Man is assigned to fulfill his duty as an individual, also as a as a as a collective, uh, also in as collective means. That is, he has to fulfill his obligation. He has, has to work for the development and prosperity um, and development of the individual as well as the society in general. So Islam and urges us to have manual work because manual work creates self-respect, self-satisfaction and honor. Manual work makes a man healthy and happy so we should not be unwilling or we should not be rejecting to work so we shall be more more diligent and more willing to do so that we can earn a halal earning honest earning those who are lazy <coughs> sorry unwilling to work their earning is not halal Honest earning requires giving hard labor. I'm giving another example from hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al Kasibu Habibullah. He said, The one who earns his livelihood by his sweat or brew is a friend of Allah. See how nicely Prophet explaining to us, how nicely he is giving us encouragement to earn our livelihood uh, through a fair and lawful means. So we must be prompt to work and we shall not show any sort of, uh, any sort of negligence we will not be showing when we are asked, except some legitimate excuses or some lawful situations. If someone is extremely ill or sick, that is a different issue. But under some normal circumstances, we should not be doing that. So this is all on about. And last point about indolence. Look at the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ again. What he said? He said, "Talabu kasbil halali faridatun ba'd al farida." It is obligatory upon a Muslim to try his or her level best to earn his livelihood and it is a fard nobody can escape so we have to we have to always try our best do our best for earning our livelihood by our own hands allah will listen to the dua of those who earn their livelihood in an honest way now let's go to the riba our next topic riba what is riba what is meant by riba riba it is an arabic word the arabic word that is used in the quran and in the sunnah that is riba riba means interest usury for your better understanding during the rest of the class i shall be using this term riba so you have to keep it in mind and bear it in, in, in your mind. That I will be using the word riba more frequently. Riba means terminologically any form of borrowing or lending money at interest. Someone gives you some money or I give you some money as a loan and I am telling you to repay me with extra money in addition to the capital sums for example i have given you one lakh taka on loan so when you give me back you will have to repay at the rate of five percent interest that is you have to add five thousand taka more to the main amount of the money this is riba riba that is this is riba whatever name might be given in this age 
it is no matter it is riba now let's go to the next topic another thing that is bribery the word bribery it is also in english its arabic equivalent word that is frequently used in the quran and the sunnah is rishwatun or rishwa it means that giving and taking money illegally which is not due which is outside the profession and this is something extra which the authority doesn't know about but people are giving taking in 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 absence or in ignorance of the right authority this is riba a bribery by the way to correct myself so bribery this is also another term that has been used as rishwa in the quran and sunnah when someone demands for more money or extra money that is not related to to the to the basic basic service okay so you don't have you have to pay more but legally lawfully you de you deserve it but you don't get it until you offer it and illegally or an illegal way so this is very important for all of us to understand the bribery the concept of bribery now have a look at the effects and consequences of riba what is the consequences and bad effects of riba if you have a close look at the consequences of the riba riba it is a means it is a means of exploitation or concentration of wealth riba encourages people to concentrate wealth in the hands of a few instead instead of circulating the wealth toward the society toward the many people riba causes bankruptcy depression moral recession economic recession because because of riba there is the rise of unemployment rampant unemployment in the society riba takes wealth from the poor to the rich it it makes the rich more rich and poor more poor this is why islam has taken is with it with highest importance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the holy quran and you will not find anybody in the quran that allah does not no notify in his book anybody of a notice of war except usury or interest taker or usury devourer where he has said in the holy quran ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa dharu ma baqiya min ar riba اتقوا الله وذروا ما بني بقي من الربا إن كنتم مؤمنين فإن لم تفعلوا فأذنوا بحرب الله بحرب من الله ورسوله أو يهبلي فير الله and give up what remains of your demand for usury for riba for interest meaning if you are true believers if you don't do that then take notice of war from Allah and his Rasul I think this is sufficient in explaining the ugliness of this crime where Allah has threatened us with war notice of war against him and his rasul prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
Allah also says in the Holy Quran, Yamhaqullahu riba wa yurabbi sadaqat. Allah will destroy riba, interest, and He will give rise in deeds of charity, alms. So we have to be very careful about this. A Muslim who has iman equal to the amount of an atom cannot involve himself in riba in any way after such a harsh notice such a harsh warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the holy Quran Allah saying us Allah also saying us saying in the holy Quran inna ladina riba. Allah has condemned those people who say that trading is only like interest. Some people they are saying or trying to say that interest and business are the same. So this is not correct. This is not totally incorrect. Totally wrong. Allah saying in a they say that the business and riba are the same thing whereas Allah has declared in the Holy Quran clearly by using the word haram he goes on saying he goes on to tell us and Allah has made riba Allah has made business halal and he has made riba haram how can someone think of that it is the same thing so I think this is enough for a believer to understand its consequence in Islam now Islamic solution to this what did Islam say about riba and bribery riba we know however uh, apparently we see that it increases it doesn't increase in fact it, 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 it no way gives rise to the amount of money it makes some people rich and re richer and richer but if you have a look at society as a whole it no way improves the conditions of mass people people are suffering because of this so we have to be very aware of this look at the seriousness of this crime of this crime and gravity of this crime where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in authentic authentic hadith collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, where the Prophet has cursed, "La'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam akil riba wa mukelahu wa katibahu wa shahidayhi wa qalahum sawa." The Prophet has cursed the the interest eater interest giver wakatibahu the one who writes of the transaction of riba washahidaihi and its witnesses waqala hum sawa then he said they are all the same on this basis it is forbidden to work in any business involving riba it is absolutely prohibited to deposit to submit to have any sort of connection with business or things that are indulging in riba so this is very clear now as far as for bribery rishwatun the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has clearly said in an authentic hadith he said Allah Allah's curse be upon the one 
who bribes and the one who receives bribes both are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us that al-rashi wal-murtashi kilahuma finnar the bribe giver and the bribe taker both will be in hellfire why Islam has sounded has said such harsh words has used because if you have a careful look that the bribery has spread like a wild bush fire in this age it has become a means to exploit general people normal people good service cannot be provided except to the one who offers it but the one who doesn't offer it he will have a very very lower and poor standard of service it generates bribery generates a lot of corruption it's a challenge we have to combat it we have to fight against it we have to speak against this crime of bribery as Islam has said the harsh words against this heinous crime so we'll be more careful about this and we shall try our level best to uh, to avoid involving in bribery and uh, and and riba so before the question answer session to sum up the prophet himself defined the bribery he has given a definition of bribery that is prophet said kullu qardin jarra naf'an fa huwa riba any loan that or any profit that is earned by a loan is riba so it is clear on the other hand islam has given us lots of alternatives to riba though the modern world the modern business world or economic system to be specific capitalist economic system is based on interest islam has given us alternative solution to it islam has given us an interest free economic system islam that is why islam prohibits all kinds of transactions involving riba islam has given a nice solution we have lots of islamic banking system nowadays if you look around you will find it depends upon us how we take it so we have to be very careful a muslim have must have no relation no connection with riba involved system riba basically it is on lend money and to inform you more there are two kinds two major kinds of riba one is riba an nasiya another is riba al fadl riba an nasiya it is loan or money lent on money a, 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 a money that is charged a loan and extra money is charged on a loan that is riba an nasiya and riba al fadl that is that means to give to take a superior thing to take a superior thing of the same kind of goods in exchange of inferior things or in exchange of things of the same kind of goods of a inferior quality okay let me clarify it more uh, i think for example dates of superior quality for dates of inferior quality in great amounts so this is the two types of riba or interest uh, that is addressed in islam allah also informed us ya ayyuhalladhina amanu la ta'kulu riba 
Look how nice Allah said, do not eat riba. Doubled and multiplied. And fear Allah that you may be successful. And to sum up the session of this topic, riba and bribery, I would like to end with this con conclusion from the Holy Quran. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِلِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْإِثْمِ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah is saying and do not eat up one another's property unjustly that is stealing through stealing robbing robbery corruption cheating deceiving usury interest bribery all kinds of unfair means all kinds of dishonest earning has been forbidden and prohibited by this ayah in the holy quran Allah does not does not stop here. He continues. He says, وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْإِثْمُ أَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Nor give bribery to the judges or rulers or to those people who are in the power. Don't bribe them. Why? So that you may eat up a part of the property of other people sinfully while you know about it or knowingly so this is the conclusion drawn and made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the holy Quran against this um, uh, worst things in Islam and in the holy Quran now let's move on to the question session boys this is your this is your time this is your opportunity I'm giving you full freedom and rest an opportunity to question me anything you didn't understand I am right now at the moment live online class you can write down your question in the comment box send it to me I shall be extremely happy to answer to your each question do not hesitate to do that please before concluding the session or con concluding the class I would love to give you a homework and this time the homework is this CQ question you will go through this CQ question very carefully understand the steam very well then you will answer start writing the answers of the following four question that is knowledge comprehension application and higher order and this is left out left to you for your reading and your preparation and you do it at home and maintain a separate kata for IME and collect all the homework in that kata and when you come back to the college or when we ask you for that so that you can produce it or bring it without uh, any hesitancy or without any delay these are the, these are the next lessons Chapter 5, Lesson 6 and 7, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu an. In the next class, in the next, in the very next class, we shall be speaking about these lessons. So get preparation, have some knowledge and information about this. I hope that will be enough for you to have your own preparation before the class um, do. And this is the time. To say words of thanks to you for your kind patience during the class I hope you have learned something from this class and you have benefited from it and I hope you will continue learning about this more at your own by reading and studying more at home 
or any resources you have available around you and now I would like to draw the conclusion of today's class I hope to meet you in a good stay and in a good health and mind and good condition when you return to the college last but not the least stay safe stay home stay healthy assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh